if the afghans invaded india to wage a holy war the indian mohammedans are not only bound to join them but also to fight the hindus if they refuse to cooperate with them so he is prepared to die for the khilafat thereby saving the cow how does this work i'll go as far as to say that gandhi almost single handedly invented communal politics in india Thank you all for joining us on Dharma Podcast again. We are back with Sandeep Balakrishna to continue chronicling the history of the Congress Party uh, that we've been doing for a while now uh, as a multi-part series. In the last episode, we spoke about how Gandhi had a one-sided, self-destructive attraction with the Ali brothers, which eventually led him to even drafting a manifesto for the implementation of Khilafat in India. We shall continue the conversation. from here on with sandeep balakrishna and take the story from sandeep uh, could you now take us through what developments took place after we delved into the attraction that gandhi had for the ali brothers and uh, the onset of the khilafat movement and his complete support for that movement yeah uh, welcome back parag uh, namaste to all the viewers uh, we are back once again with yet another episode chronicling the near complete or comprehensive history of the congress party since its inception in the previous episode we had uh, paused at uh, you know how uh, mohandas karamchand gandhi had uh, uh, pretty much fallen into the trap of the ali brothers led by uh, the elder ali maulana mohammad ali jauhar and uh, how that trap led gandhi to embrace and lead the khilafat movement so called khilafat movement from the front and starting with uh, today's episode i will explain and i will explain in a step by step manner the full consequences of gandhi's khilafat leadership and mind you when i say full consequences the full consequences suffered by hindus throughout bharatavarsha of that time i need to emphasize again and again when i say bharatavarsha of that time it includes afghanistan pakistan bangladesh burma uh, and what what is left today of uh, uh, what is today known as india how gandhi's uh, khilafat leadership led to untold suffering uh on the part of the hindus throughout this bharatavarsha the spread of the geography of that time might give you uh, you know a small idea a brief idea of you know uh, you know the extent of what had occurred this includes the hindu community located in kohat which is in afghanistan today lahore karachi rawalpindi delhi jabalpur parabanki Malegaon, Gulbarga, leading all the way up to the genocidal climax in Malabar. I will take you, starting with uh, today's episode, like I said, I will take you in a step-by-step -step fashion, explaining you know the 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 untold sufferings, the untold humiliations and gross murders uh, inflicted upon the Hindus, all thanks and solely thanks to Mr. Mohan Das Karamchand Gandhi's. frontal leadership of the so called khilafat movement one more point which is uh, pretty much overlooked in the mainstream narratives even about khilafat is that gandhi's support for this pan islamic project called khilafat movement this support was a <coughs> definitive episode in his long political career and understanding his role in this so called movement holds the key to understanding the history of the congress party under his despotic monopoly because nowhere else in the world has tyranny had such a saintly face well said well when said. you look at you know uh, gandhi's role in this whole uh, uh, dastardly event almost every behavior every move every manipulation and every tactic of the congress from gandhi all the way up to rahul gandhi can be traced to gandhi's unashamed support for this khilafat project keep this in mind 
so you'll have a better understanding uh, as i go about explaining every uh, almost every minute detail of what transpired so with this backdrop we can step into today's episode and uh, as i've mentioned in a couple of previous episodes from the very beginning the ali brothers never concealed the fact that they were fighting for a pan islamic cause they never ever anywhere at no point of time did they say that that they are fighting for the liberation of india for india's freedom from the colonial british regime so they never concealed this fact that you know their fight was a pan islamic fight and they repeatedly declared in public that they were muslims first and indians next okay so don't believe all this salim javier type uh, nonsense that is peddled by uh, bollywood uh, uh, you know sickening narrative that has been set in motion i don't know since uh, 60 65 years so don't believe that so ali brothers and their followers they declared they were very clear sir you have to appreciate that no ambiguity that they were we are muslims first and indians next so let's look at a small data point that uh, most people today don't know i'm not saying uh, uh, this to you know kind of make a shocking revelation but these are small details which matter especially when you're talking about uh, you know such an important episode in uh, india's history so here's the small data point sometime in uh, 1919 or 1920 there was a guy named ghazi amaul amanullah khan so this amanullah khan was the amir of afghanistan later he declared himself as the king of afghanistan so this amanullah khan in those days a rumor was floated that amanullah khan would invade india from afghanistan because a section of indian muslims had written to him to liberate them from the british clutches how different it is again what has changed parag how different is it from a tipu sultan or a shah waliullah writing letters to alien uh, uh, muslim kings in far away lands outside india so this rumor was floated that uh, inviting amanullah khan to invade india and the moment muhammad ali heard this muhammad ali jawhar the moment when he heard this this is what he said in public if the afghans invaded india to wage a holy war it's not a military invasion if the afghans invaded india to wage a holy war the indian muhammadans are not only bound to join them but also to fight the hindus if they refuse to cooperate with them you see the condition at every step yeah you had a question uh, first uh, uh, the way you put it hmm. no never has tyranny had such a friendly face yeah. is really really telling so yeah. thank you for actually putting it that way thank you i'm just trying to extend that is there any extend that as in uh, uh, drawing on that is there any religion which labels violence as holy war only abrahamic religions so then therefore sanatan it is doctrinal it is doctrinal it is scriptural so it is mandated it sanctifies killing it, yeah it sanctifies killing yet even after muhammad ali made the statement that if this amanullah khan uh, invades india hindus have to compulsorily join muslims even after that and this was not on one occasion mohammad ali made this on repeated occasions variations of the same uh, 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 speech even after that gandhi did not utter a single word of criticism or condemnation nor did he raise protest but kept addressing mohammad ali as my dear brother you should read that i'll read that out you know uh, you know his correspondence and his whole uh, romance with uh, uh, the ali brothers i will read that out in the next episode i mean it's quite extraordinary mind boggling so he did not uh, uh, condemn uh, the ali brothers and uh, as rc majumdar says uh, this sort of behavior by gandhi and uh, uh, some sections of his congress uh, which were enamored with gandhi this sort of behavior on the part of the ali brothers did not disturb their dream of founding indian nationality on the basis of hindu muslim unity the extent to which gandhi slobbered after mohammad ali is truly nauseating for us uh as several uh, data points on this but uh, we we'll look at them you know uh, in the context but uh, here is what uh, gandhi wrote in his journal titled young india uh, the article is dated 
October 20th, 1921, quote, I claim that with both of us, the Khilafat is the central fact. With Maulana Muhammad Ali, it is a central fact because it is his religion. With me, it is a central fact because in laying down my life for the sake of the Khilafat, I ensure the safety of the cow. And the cow is my religion. I ensure the safety of the cow from the Musalman knife, it seems. So, he is prepared to die for the Khilafat, thereby saving the cow. How does this work? How does this work? Bizarre. Okay. Uh, but, uh, Parag, it's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, the millionth wonder of the world, I guess. There were several leaders in the Congress party, in Gandhi's extended circle, who fully understood the repercussions of the Khilafat movement that, uh, uh, you know, if, if it was allowed free run, they understood the exact extent of these repercussions and they knew that these consequences, these repercussions would be the exact opposite of what Gandhi believed. What Gandhi believed, you know, that by joining forces with Ali brothers, uh, Hindu-Muslim unity would be achieved and therefore you will form a united front, front to fight against the British government. But his support, all these leaders knew that, you know, joining this kind of a fatal friendship would have the exact opposite consequences of what Gandhi was dreaming of. Here is what uh, Chitaranjan Das wrote in a letter to Mr. Lala Lajpat Rai. I quote, I am not afraid of seven crores of Muslims in Hindustan, but I think the seven crores of Hindustan plus the armed hosts of Afghanistan, Central Asia, Arabia, Mesopot uh, uh, Mesopotamia and Turkey will be irresistible. Very clear. This is what pan-Islamic means. It might surprise a lot of people. This is quite interesting here. Okay, It might uh, surprise a lot of people if I say this, but at the height of Gandhi's support for the Khilafat, even Nehru was opposed to it. So, he was? He was. And he said, ye, ye nahi chal rahe. Nobody in the Congress dared to raise their voice against Gandhi and the reason for this is attributed to several things. Uh, among other things, Gandhi had cast a kind of a magic charm or a spell or he had some kind of a personal magnetic uh, influence uh, which prevented these Congress leaders from putting him uh, on the right track. Even if we disregard all this, even we, if we discount this supernatural claims of uh, a magic spell or whatever, there is a rational explanation for why these Congress leaders did not... Uh, uh, you know, raise a voice, did not dissuade Gandhi from persisting on this suicidal path, uh, which also, this rational explanation also tells us a secret of Gandhi's complete domination of the Congress party. That reason is as follows. With his oven fresh brand of Mahatma type of politics, which was completely new. With this brand of Mahatma politics, Gandhi had reduced all others in the Congress to the status of mere dwarfs, you know, the self, uh, uh, the, 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 the moral uh, arrogance of a self-righteous man is more deadlier than all the nuclear arsenal in the world put together. This is the only rational explanation. Can you fast? If you question Gandhi, can you fast like me? Can you go half naked like me? Can you be celibate like me? Over, nobody can. This is, this, this kind of thing is not meant for ordinary human beings, sane, rational people who build families. And they thereby sustain communities and thereby build the economy and thereby, you know, uh, keep build the nation, nation going. Yes. That, that could be one rational explanation. Now, let's get back to Muhammad Ali's public declaration, which I just mentioned, that he would support the uh, Afghan emir's uh, planned invasion of India. As reprehensible as Muhammad Ali's uh, support for that uh, uh, Khan guy was, you know what is even more uh, disgusting? It was Gandhi's support to this. Here's what uh, Gandhi wrote in support of Muhammad Ali and I quote, I would certainly assist the Amir of Afghanistan if he waged war against the British government. That is to say, I would openly tell my countrymen that it would be a crime to help a government which had lost the confidence of the nation to remain in power. <coughs> you know, this is cheap sophistry. Why? Here's the thing. Just a few months ago, the same Gandhi had reaffirmed and re-sworn his loyalty to the British government even after the Jallianwala Bagh 
pogrom remember the episode yes yes right what what how he expressed his support even after they yeah, did yeah, what the commission did. right uh, white wash the whole but, thing yeah. and now this same gandhi is saying that the british have lost confidence of the indian nation why does he say and uh, what does gandhi mean when he says indian nation it means the muslim population of india it's synonymous indians so, is equal to this and uh, you know this this is such disgusting uh, uh, double standards and hypocrisy like i said not too many people in the congress uh, could stand up to gandhi but we must really bow over heads in reverence to three people who actually stood up to that the first person is a great shankaran nayar the second is dr b r ambedkar and the third is none other than ramesh chandra majumdar so we look at this in the reverse chronology let's look at uh, how r c majumdar takes gandhi to task in this khilafat episode an ordinary layman whose eyes are not blurred by the dazzling mystic halo of gandhi can only deduce from these lines that gandhi was ready to cast aside his patriotism and nationalism and even sacrifice india in order to placate the muslims no ambiguity crystal clear which is what he did pretty much eventually gandhi must bear the chief share of the blame for the hindu support to the khilafat movement for it was he who led the way he misled them howsoever gandhi might justify himself there can be no question that the pan islamic movement based on the extra territorial allegiance of the indian muslim cut the very root of the nascent indian nationalism any support direct or indirect to the khilafat movement not to speak of the active participation as its leader must therefore be regarded as anti national it was called out and this is exactly what it is playing out today right reversal ho gaya na huh? yeah how do the history textbooks portray gandhi's leadership of khilafat clearly he is calling him majumdar is calling him anti national based on hard evidence all right continue the conduct of gandhi a great political leader in assuming the leadership of the khilafat movement was certainly very reprehensible judged in this context the epithet father of the nation given given to him by his devotees seems to be singularly inappropriate while his dear brother muhammad ali declared that he would join the afghans and force the hindus to do the same gandhi was prepared to help this ignoble cause of making india a darul islam where are these people para ye ye hota hai truth telling you see no prevarication no perhaps no if no but no maybe crystal clear now you see parag why nawab nehru as the first prime minister of independent india why this man why this great nawab tried to prevent rc majumdar from writing this real complete comprehensive history of our freedom struggle and why he destroyed or at least supervised the destruction of rc majumdar's career as a towering and a doyen of history writing in india because if rc majumdar had been allowed to write the official history of india like this this would still be the india's official history published by the government which is why they threw him out i have done a separate episode on this yes i'm sure so we'll I, yeah it. yeah so i'm i'm saying but look at this this is exactly by destroying that yeah they have uh deprived all generations still today five generations, no, five near, generations near. today and the reversal and clean up is long overdue yeah so this is how things have happened but this still doesn't end there okay this is what majumdar writes okay look at the other side pattabhi sitaramayya the great eminent saintly pattabhi sitaramayya who was one of the foremost chamchas of mohandas gandhi he justified gandhi's leadership of khilafat and every blunder that gandhi made during uh, uh, the khilafat episode this patabhi sitaramayya justifies gandhi's blunder blunders in a mind numbing manner and this is what Pat- patabhi sitaramayya writes in his capacity as the governor of madhya pradesh 
after India became independent. Gandhi's plans have all along been revealed to him by his own instinct and not evolved by the cold calculating logic of the mind. His inner voice is his mentor and monitor, his friend, philosopher and guide. He saw things as if by a flash and framed his conduct by impulse. He is not wrong actually. He is not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> to the righteous man, these two are the supreme guides of life and not reason and intellect. This is unbelievable. Absolute, absolute bootlegging and reflection of the highest order. You know, this same Patabi Sita Ramaya was propped up by Gandhi from behind the scenes to contest against this extraordinary uh, force of nature named Subhash Chandra Bose for the presidentship of the Congress. And despite Gandhi's very petty, very, very nasty manipulations, you know, behind, uh, uh, in the dark, in the shadows, despite all his manipulations, Subhash Chandra Bose won with an overwhelming majority. And this was such a blow to Gandhi's ego. You know, Mahatmas are not supposed to have, they should, Egos. they should, you know, uh, they should have risen above petty things like ego and anger and all that. It hurt his ego so badly that for the duration that uh, Bose was uh, president of Congress, he harassed him and tortured him every second. To the extent that Bose saw through it and he said, look, this is not working. You call yourself as a party that is fighting for freedom struggle. And if this is how you behave within the party, I won't be party to it. He quit in disgust and got out of India. That, that story we'll narrate later. Some other time. This is the same Patabi Sita Ramaya who also wrote the official history of India, which is still parroted by congressmen today. And made pura, its way into pura, our... Pura whitewash hai. And made its way into our academy here. Right. After Rasi Majumdar, let's get to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, phenomenal, and see what he wrote about Gandhi and Khilafat. In fact, uh, uh, Thoughts on Pakistan, uh, his book, monumental work actually. It should decorate the library of every Indian, even, even the home of every Indian. Uh, in that, there is a chapter dedicated to Khilafat and Gandhi's uh, role in it. It's very detailed. We'll look at it in a future episode. <laughs> Maybe do a dedicated episode to that. So, I'll just uh, uh, read out a summary from that chapter, some excerpts from that. And in my humble opinion, Dr. Ambedkar was one of the few people who refused to be seduced and blinded by Gandhi's alleged Mahatmahood. And uh, it's extraordinary, Parag, and I quote, at the very commencement of his career as a political leader of India, when Mr. Gandhi startled the people of India by his promise to win Swaraj within six months, Mr. Gandhi said that he could perform this miracle only if certain conditions were fulfilled. One of these conditions was the achievement of Hindu-Muslim unity. There you go. Mr. Gandhi is never tired of saying that there is no Swaraj without Hindu-Muslim unity. The Mohammedans started the Khilafat movement in 1919. The objective of the movement was twofold, to preserve the Khilafat and to maintain the integrity of the Turkish Empire. Both these objectives were unsupportable. The Khilafat could not be saved simply because the Turks did not want the Sultan. As simple as that. The movement was started by the Mohammedans. It was taken up by, by Mr. Gandhi with a tenacity and faith which must have surprised many Mohammedans themselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there were many people who doubted the ethical basis of the Khilafat movement and tried to dissuade Mr. Gandhi from taking any part in the movement, the ethical basis of which was so questionable. Mr. Gandhi refused to yield to their advice. Mr. Gandhi not only agreed with the Muslims in the Khilafat, in the Khilafat cause, but acted as their guide and their friend. Mr. Gandhi was the only Hindu who joined the Muslims. Dr. Ambedkar was a very much a contemporary eyewitness, even participant in many phases of the freedom struggle. Let's not forget that. Those who go by, swear by his name today, yeah, 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 yeah. will be they, loath to accept yeah, this yeah. fact. They, they, they have uh, whitewashed uh, this. Hmm. Dr. Ambedkar continues, In taking up the cause of Khilafat, Mr. Gandhi achieved a double purpose. 
he carried the Congress plan of winning over the Muslims to its culmination. Secondly, he made the Congress a power in the country which it would not have been if the Muslims had not joined it. See, where this is clinical, logical, you know, uh, analysis. The cause of the Khilafat appealed to the Muslims far more than political safeguards with the result that the Muslims who were outside it trooped into the Congress. It has a simple word in English, infiltration. The credit for this, the credit for this infiltration must of course go to Mr. Gandhi. A group in the Congress which consisted of Hindus feared that the Mohammedans might extend their non-cooperation to inviting the Afghans to invade India, in which case the movement, instead of resulting in Swaraj, might result in the subjection of India to a Muslim Raj. Anybody with common sense, this doesn't take genius to understand. But they could not prevail. So, you see, further, Mr. Ambedkar writes, Mr. Gandhi did not care for those Hindus who were opposed to joining, uh, who were opposed to joining the Muslims in the non-cooperation movement. Like I said, tyranny. He has never called the Muslims to account even when they have been guilty of gross crimes against the Hindus. You know, select ex excerpts. And the whole chapter deserves a separate episode by itself. We can do that sometime. And this is the just the tip of the iceberg, uh, uh, Parag. And uh, after Mr. Ambedkar, let's get to Sir Shankaran Nair, who was Gandhi's uh, uh, senior contemporary. And Mr. Shankaran Nair, was one of the most virulent critics of uh, Mr. Gandhi and rightly so. His book, which is another classic and should decorate the homes of all Hindus. The title of the book is Gandhi and Anarchy. Gandhi and Anarchy. That's the title. That book, in that book, uh, by the way, Gandhi and Anarchy had been promptly banned or at least made unavailable for several decades by none other than Mr. Nawab Nehru and his dynasty. So, this is what uh, Sri Shankaran Nair uh, writes in his book, Gandhi and Anarchy, couple of excerpts from it. Quote, the Hindus have nothing to do with the Khilafat agitation. But so far as Gandhi was concerned, the position is quite clear. He puts forward whichever is the most extreme demand made by the Khilafat party without inquiry as to their reasonableness. I repeat that. Gandhi puts forward whatever is the most extreme demand of the Khilafat party without any inquiry as to their reasonableness. When therefore Gandhi and his followers fraternized with the Khilafatists, the latter had no doubt of their support if it eventually came to rebellion, meaning violence. They were confirmed uh, they matlab the Khilafat party. They were confirmed in this by Gandhi's attitude on the questions in issue between them and the Hindus. Gandhi advi advises the latter, that is the Hindus, to submit themselves to Mohammedan dictates. The extent to which Mr. Gandhi is prepared to go in support of the Khilafat claim is stated in this extract in Gandhi's own words. Quote, what will the imperial government do? Imperial matlab British government. What will the imperial government do if France were to attempt to deprive England's struggle to retain Dover? Dover is a province. Yeah. Can Indians be expected to sit idle when the Khilafat is vivisected? Where is Khilafat? Boss Turkey. Okay, these are Gandhi's words. And then continues Mr. Shankaran Nair. Mr. Gandhi belongs to a class of thought which has attracted some of the noblest minds in this world, class of thought, matlab, unka jo bhi spirituality tha, wo. Hmm? he belongs to a class of thought which has attracted some of the noblest minds in this world, but in applying, but in applying uh, the, this gospel of life to politics, he has shown himself to be a babe in the woods and his interference has been generally mischievous. We will have uh, uh, occasion to examine uh, in more detail his uh, comprehensive critique of Gandhi. What is even more interesting is that Shankaran Nair published this book in the year 1922 and it became an instant bestseller 
and ran into a reprint within months. Note the year, 1922. We'll revisit it. Like I said earlier, at the beginning of this episode, the Khilafat episode is the magic key that unlocks the Mahatma brand of his politics. We don't notice too many, uh, when we go back uh, to that period, we do not notice too many communal riots in the princely states. Even as Gandhi was doing his agitation, the princely states, more than 500 of them, were relatively free from communal riots. Majority of them occurred in British ruled India. They occurred all thanks to Mr. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. And I will go so far as to say, and I have the uh, backing of several uh, uh, eminent scholars, both past and present. I will go as far as to say that Gandhi almost single handedly invented communal politics in India. Yeah, you established that in the previous episode. As His as template as is as playing out. As, as a result, and you know, he invented communal politics as a result of this mindless pursuit of an illusory Hindu Muslim unity. In closing, here are some more data points that testify further, further testify to Mr. Gandhi's incurable obsession with the Muslim community. And apart from Mr. R.C. Majumdar, uh, a veteran academic named Mr. Kothari, he has provided some of the most insightful analysis of Gandhi's Islamic addiction. And uh, Mr. Kothari traces this addiction to something hidden deep inside Gandhi's psyche. Let me read out a quote. Gandhi had many Muslim friends. When he could not find a suitable job for himself in India and was deeply frustrated, a Muslim firm came to his rescue by providing, uh, providing him an assignment in South Africa. Uh, you know, I touched upon this in the <coughs> first or second uh, uh, episode of the series. Continues Mr. Kothari. Gandhi was grateful to the Muslim merchant and throughout his life, he sincerely worked for Muslim interests, political life uh, and in his political life, he clung tenaciously to what is called a Muslim appeasement policy until his last breath. He thought that Muslims would be grateful to him for his act and develop lasting love for the Hindus. He incited their pan-Islamic sentiments. This is Mr. Kothari's pithy but blunt analysis, which is also accurate in the larger context of uh, uh, events and, you know, the history of that period. And, uh, yeah. So, was it, uh, you touched upon it, not now, in the past conversations, was it naivete that he actually believed Hindu-Muslim unity will happen uh, with whatever he... Yeah. No, 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 no doubt about uh, that at all. This analysis by Mr. Kothari also provides a good uh, and a rather uh, rational backdrop for why Gandhi supported and frontally led the Khilafat movement. And here are some gems from Gandhi's own mouth. Quote number one, Muslim brothers have begun to take interest in politics ever since the Khilafat question arose. Quote number two, I have contributed the largest share to the awakening of the Muslim masses. Quote number three, Shaukhat Ali and Muhammad Ali are pure gold. Quote number three, uh, sorry, quote number four, Maulana Muhammad Ali carries me in his pocket. Quote number five, <clears throat> Ali brothers and I serve as an objective lesson to all the Hindus and Muslims in Hindu-Muslim unity. These are his words. And uh, now we can uh, come to the uh, closing element. We can close uh, today's session, today's conversation with two quotes by two different eminent men. Quote 1. The time will doubtless come when Mahatma Ji's errors and omissions will have to be made good. Then will each one of us, according to his zeal and capacity, have the opportunity of making his own contribution. Yes, who said this? Ambedkar. Mahakavi Shri Rabindranath Tagore. Tagore. According to uh, some accounts, it was Rabindranath Tagore who gave the title Mahatma to Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. And he said this. He said this. Quote number two. India would be better off today and healthier in mind without the Gandhian heritage. 
this was written by arthur kiesler committed uh, uh, communist who eventually gave up his communism and became a highly virulent and trenchant critic of uh, uh, communism and especially uh, stalinist and uh, you know soviet russia so two different continents two different uh, brilliant uh, minds having the same pretty assessment pretty much have the same assessment of mr mohandas uh, karamchand gandhi with that we can conclude today's uh, conversation and uh, in future this also serves as a good uh, uh, preface good uh, lead up to the next conversation in which i will begin narrating the savage consequences that the hindus had to suffer all because of mohandas karamchand gandhi's uh, incurable but temporary romance with the ali brothers just as listeners like me recover from the previous episode sandeep brings more disturbing and jarring facts to life about mohandas karamchand gandhi and his conduct and i think this episode can be summed up in the way sandeep put it brilliantly that nowhere did tyranny have such a saintly face and his illusory pursuit of hindu muslim unity came at the cost of hindu genuflection repeatedly and we are paying the price of that with each passing day in circa 2024 so sandeep uh, thank you for uh, chronicling the history of congress party and particularly bringing out twisted thinking of gandhi and sowing the seed of communal politics so we look forward to having you back for that conversation thank you all for joining the dharma podcast please like share and subscribe so that the content reaches a wider audience and thank you for your patronage and support